in the next part we're going to install Tailwind and if we go to tailwindcss.com they actually have a section where they tell you on how to install Tailwind with Next.js so that's what we're going to use to go back inside of your terminal I'm going to scroll up here and as I said before I'm not going to copy and paste this in I'm going to type it in because we want to learn something here so first we have to create a product we've already done that so now we're going to install Tailwind and we need a few libraries we have Tailwind CSS post CSS and auto prefixer so npm install slash d to install it as a dev dependency Tailwind CSS post CSS and auto prefixer like that so we installed three packages in one go here so that's why we separate them with a space and then we press enter so we install the packages and now we need to run mpx tailwind css init to, to actually initialize tailwind mpx tailwind css init dash p as it says here it will generate the tailwind config file and the post css config file for us so it tells us here that it created those files and that's good so go back inside of the code editor and you can see that we have the tailwind.config and we have the post css.config we need to specify the paths to our different components and pages because in next.js we have our pages in the pages folder and then we're going to have a components folder where we're going to have the small components that we're going to use for our pages so up here you can see that we have this content for now it's an empty array so we're going to fill this up with a string and we give the path to our pages so dot forward slash pages forward slash star star or asterisk forward slash star dot curly brackets and then we specify the files inside of here we want our js files we want our ts files we want the jsx and the tsx so that is going to grab all those file types in the pages folder and the subfolders to the pages and then we have a comma and create another string and that is going to be dot forward slash components forward slash star star forward slash star and the same thing here dot curly brackets js ts jsx and tsx so this will make sure that Tailwind finds the files where we're going to use the Tailwind classes. And we're actually going to come back to this file later to, to do our own modifications to Tailwind where we create, for example, the grid and the height of different stuff. We're going to set the font also inside of here. So we can actually grab the font from Google Fonts. Google Fonts and it's called Railway like this and we're going to use oh why isn't it showing that's pretty strange it isn't showing me the font here maybe it is because i'm in the incognito mode i don't know why but let's see if this works we're going to need the regular 400 so i'm going to add that one and we're going to need the bold one 700 and here you can see that we have the link here so we grab this here copy it and inside of the pages folder create a new file that's called underscore document.tsx and paste it in there for now it's not going to be like this but bear with me here i go back and if we check the next.js documentation so they have a section about font optimization and it's built in in next.js since version 10.2 and we can just grab this one here and copy it if we want to do that but yet again i'm actually going to type it in but i wanted to show that it's from here that i got this code and they actually use a class here i don't use that anymore i just use functional components so i'm going to create a functional component for this one instead so go back to the code and just push those down and import curly brackets we have html capital h we have head capital H, main capital M, and next script capital N and capital S. And we import it from next forward slash document. 
So these are the components that we're going to use. And then I create a functional component. Const document equal. I have an arrow function in this case. You can have a regular function if you want to have that. And I think we can actually make an implicit return here instead, as it's an error function. We're just returning JSX. So first we have our HTML. And these are not regular HTML tags or head tags, because these are imported from the next document. So you need to use these ones here. They are special for Next.js. Then we have our head. And it's inside of the head that we're going to do this import. This one here, we actually don't need this one. And not this one, because Next.js are going to optimize it itself. So we just need this last one here. Move that one inside of the head. Do some auto formatting and see what happens. Yeah. We remove this one here. And we self-close it instead. Yeah, and the link disappeared. So link. And now it tells me something else. And what is that? Yeah, it's not outside of head. It's actually inside of the head, but it's telling me that it's outside. Maybe it is because I haven't created my body. Yeah, probably. And for this one, we're also going to have a class name. And now we're going to use some Tailwind. We haven't created that yet, but that's what we're going to go back to our Tailwind config file and create a config for the font railway. And make sure that you spell, spell it R-A-L-E-W-A. Why not railway as in some kind of train stuff or anything? And inside of the body, we need to return the main component like that and also the next script. And it still complains. I'm still inside of the head. That's strange. First, I'm going to export default document. Yeah, it was the export that created this one here. So now it should work. So what I've done here is that I imported these components from next document. And we modify this document a little bit by importing our font, our Google font. And then I add this class name, font-railway. This one, we're going to create this one ourselves just in a minute. So I add that class name to the body just to make sure that we add our font. Very important that it's called underscore document.tsx and it should be in the pages folder. So go back to the tailwind.config and here just inside of our theme, this is how you can customize your theme. We create another property, font family. You can see that we have this IntelliSense and that is because I installed this plugin. There we have it. If I search for Tailwind, you can see that I installed the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense and that is really, really good to have. You can see that it has a lot of downloads it will give you this IntelliSense and stuff of all the classes you can use. So that is pretty neat. So I'm going to do it again here. You can see if I start typing in font, you can see that it shows me font family here that actually exists on the Tailwind. So it gives me that uh, auto completion and that's really great. Colon, it's an object. And then we add in railway and yet again, check the spelling. And it's going to be the railway font capital R here inside of the array and it's going to be a sans dash serif so we fall back to that one great so that's our font setup and what did they tell us more in tailwind here yeah we move down here in the checklist so the globals.css we're going to add in those directives for tailwind go back again to the code and we have a global styles inside of styles we're not going to use this model style here so delete that one and globals. Just mark everything here and delete it. And then we add the tailwind directives. Tailwind base and tailwind components. And then we have the last one tailwind utilities. Like that. In some cases also, it can give you some warning here, uh, just a yellow warning telling you that this doesn't exist or something. I don't remember it now because I don't have it. But that is fine, actually, if you have that warning. It will work anyways, probably. But for now, I don't have it here, so that's great. It usually goes away if you install that plugin that I told you about, the Tailwind plugin. I highly recommend you to use that one. 
it will make your job so much easier. And this is everything for now in this config for Tailwind. We're gonna go back to this one and do some smaller stuff later. And we try it out, npm run dev. And now you can see that it tells me that some stuff didn't work here. So we can actually modify that one also, because in the pages, in the index file, we have a lot of stuff here that we're not gonna use. So for now, we remove it. We can create a main div like that and just uh, call it rmdb or something like that. And we remove all these imports here like that. Just break it clear. And I'm gonna type in npm run dev again to see that it works. No utility classes were detected in your source files. Okay, there's some error actually. Let's go back and see what it is. It actually works, but it told me that there was something wrong here. I don't know what that is, to be honest. Yeah, I probably did something wrong with the content. So let's check that out. Yeah, and I know what it is. I actually put those spaces in here. They shouldn't be there in these strings. So just remove them. And I'm going to try to start it up again. npm run dev. And now it works. And hopefully our application works. And you can see that it's actually the correct font here also. So that's great. So we successfully installed Tailwind. And we have one more library to install before we can start building some stuff. And that is React Query. And we're going to do that in the next part.